Hola, mi gente linda, and welcome to Panavision, the Todo Soul Flow podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your super fly, super awesome hosts, Annette y Clary, uh, the co-founders of Panamia Club. Yes, for those who, you do, who, who, for those of you who do not know, Panamia Club is a collective that's making finding local entrepreneurs and artists easier than finding at the Genio in Doral. Every episode, we're going to bring you a new entrepreneur doing amazing things in your community, to for a quick discussion and then we'll also bring in a musician with a new release today we welcome sarah from dear eleanor to discuss the creative scene in miami and later we'll hear from a musical artist enrique from the miami-based band still blue to hear their latest ep paint me funny but before we get to that um Clary. Como andas? How you doing, babe? Tranquila, tranquila. Really happy. It's <laughs> Friday. <laughs> and also feeling like I'm really looking forward to shouting out the new panas we got this week. Oof, absolutely. Tell yes. me. Yes. Let me begin with Luna Bell Beauty. They're an esthetician based out of Miami. Okay. And then we have Pigeon Society, my favorite bird brand. It's true. Shout out to Leo. I love, I love that boy. Uh, he's an artist from Miami. We also have Sea and Salt Spa. They're a black-owned spa offering non-invasive treatments to feel good in your body. And then we have a band that you might know is called Still Blue. Uh, so they're a five-piece band, emulsifying indie rock, folk, and all country. And we'll definitely get to know them a little bit more later on. Speaking of people we're going to get to know really well in this episode, we also have Dear Eleanor. They're a community space based out of Wynwood that's focused on education, connection, and accessible events. And then next we have Cuerpo Miami, or MIA, <laughs> organic and natural body products made in Miami. I am fully excited to try these out. I, whenever yes. I see them, I'll make sure to buy something because their graphics are just... So cute. So cute. We also finally have Planet Oogly, and I'm really excited about them. They just signed up today, so welcome to the club. Welcome. They're a printmaker and mixed media artist. So I, my heart is always happy when another artist joins the yes. collective. <laughs> I'm like, yes, more, more, more. <laughs> um, and that is also putting us at 155 members, so like, yes. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> I can still remember when we were at 50, the double digits. Yes, you know? and we were so, like, yes. But honestly, no. truly, thank you for everyone who has joined so far. I cannot tell you how excited Annette and I get when we get an email saying that someone else has joined the club. So thank you so much. And if you're interested in joining but haven't yet, it's really easy to join. Just DM us. It's a quick form. Uh, it's free to join, and we'll make a profile for you. And eventually, we'll put you up on our keyword searchable directory. Yes, yeah. big shout out to Jen and Jeremy, by the way, for helping us develop that locals directory. Um, yes. So anyways, it's important to stay educated on what's going on with our panas, but also with our local community. So luckily, Claudia and I are here to catch you up and lo que está pasando in South Florida in our segment, Meanwhile in SoFlo. <laughs> Yeah, so meanwhile in Slow Flow, we have Smash Miami. They reached out to us. They're an organization here based in Miami um, called Struggle for Miami's Affordable and, ha and Sustainable Housing. They said that insurance premiums are increasing and displacing low-income Black and Latine homeowners across Miami. And elected officials are doing nothing. What a so surprise. what you can do is actually you can go on and sign a pledge. You can go on to houseofjustice.us and sign a pledge um, that will hopefully alleviate these stressors. Awesome. And this next bit of news is coming from our good friends at Casa Crea yes. and also um, a local event pr producer, Omega Spit. They are coming out with the 786 Film Festival, and it's a celebration to spotlight local filmmakers of all experience levels hosted by locals. And kind of like just a little bit on this, not only, quote, do we want these artists to receive exposure, but provide opportunities and resources to further their career in film. The name is inspired by the area code 786, which was created after all combinations of 305 were occupied. The title of 786 fit perfectly for this festival, representing a new generation of artists, in this case, filmmakers of all ages and backgrounds. So definitely check that out. May 26th. Really, honestly, super excited I'm to really see excited what they come about up that with. One, yes. And lastly, we have the Vados. They're one of our first members to sign up. They just released a song today called Need a Break. So if you need a break, 
Go check out their song on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to the music. Shout out to the Vados. To the Vados. Love them. Love Uh. them. (laughs) Um, We also have an artist, Ozzy Sampler, or Samper. Uh, They're offering private classes, um, so you can DM him as well for some private classes. Yes. Hit up Mr. Samper (laughs) if you want them classes. And anyways, in our news, in Banamia Club news, well, um... We said this last time, but I'm going to say it again because it's still pretty new. This Da-da-da-da. is our first live show. <laughs> Banavision. Ah, okay. So, yeah, if we're doing this podcast. If you want to be featured on this podcast, if you're interested, definitely reach out to us. We're going to be covering a person within our, always people within our organization. So, if you're not yet, you're always welcome to sign up. And then we, of course, have, uh, we always try to bring in a, mu- a music artist. Mm-hmm that is hopefully releasing new music around the time that we're filming. Yes, big shout out to Miami Community Radio who is having us as a resident here. Um, so we're really, really happy with partnering, uh, partnering with them. We also have incredible news. Next week, we're gonna be interviewing our resident astrologer, Earth Bias. Um, Let me just say that again, our resident astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> Earth Bias. So Kat just joined us a month ago, April 12th. She's really interested in delving into astrology when it comes to activism and is really interested in kind of tying astrology all together, not just how we influence our lives, but how it can bring us together. So I'm really, really excited about that. Absolutely. And you're going to see a lot more of her. We're going to be coming out with the weekly collapse, hopefully a monthly newsletter. So we're going to talk about all of that next episode. You definitely can't miss. And then uh, another really cool announcement that we wanted to come up with is May 19th, we are going to be doing a collab event with local ceramicist Wavy Creations. So she's been throwing these wonderful ceramic gatherings Mm -hmm. uh, in her house in Coral Gables. Like, y'all, when I tell you, it is the most wholesome experience. You definitely don't want to miss. We're going to have it. It's the 19th, but really, it's the new moon in Taurus, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, So we're going to invite our resident astrologer to talk about the new moon in Taurus. We're going to be making moon jars. It's going to be real cute. Under the mango tree. It's going to be incredible. You're going to want to come. And then uh, something else that is really interesting is that we also have an event coming up on the 2nd of June, and it is in collab with Backroom Sessions at night. Naomi's Garden. Details TBA, mm-hmm. okay, yes. in terms of like lineup and concept and all of that, but the, the date is set. We're keeping some secrets this week. Yes, yes. More, More to be week. revealed next week. Yes, yes. So <laughs> that's it for Meanwhile and SoFlo. If you know of anything else interesting, you can always submit it every week. We'll ask our community. So feel free to reach out or DM us. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now that we are all caught up with community things, we can finally bring in our lovely guest and querida pana, Sarah of Dear Eleanor. Yay! Yay. I'm gonna yes. just scoot Slide over, give her a little over. bit of space. More the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get her a mic. <laughs> Would be nice. Yes. Um, in the meantime, hi, love. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? So so good. Thank you for coming on. We're we are Thank absolutely you so much for having me. Yes. yes, we are absolutely just super excited to talk to you. Ever since that we met you, what it was like two weeks ago, two three weeks ago, something like that. Two yes. three weeks Fast ago. Fast friendship. <laughs> But, uh, you know, kind of one of those friendships that you just know great things are going to come out of. Aligned, aligned. Yes, absolutely. Aligned. That word keeps showing up in this, uh, these last couple months with all these things I've been doing. So I'm happy that you all feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. What an excellent sign. An excellent sign. So just kind of like as a beginner question, right? Um, you, your name is Sarah and uh, you run Dear Eleanor. And that's all we know for now. So <laughs> let's, uh, do you, is there anything that you can tell me related to like what Dear Eleanor is, like who Sarah is? So a little bit of background for me. Um, I grew up in Miami um, and I left in the fall of 2007 for college. I moved to New York and I was up there until last year really. And a lot of the people in my, I graduated from Dash, class of 07, and a lot of the people in that class, um, and that's the art-minded people, 
left because there wasn't really a lot going on down here at that time. Um, I moved up to New York. I wasn't doing art things. I was doing other things, um, meeting different people in the community, volunteering with different events, things like that. Um, I ended up going to grad school uh, and getting a master's in education with a focus in human sexuality. Interesting. So I was going down that path for a little bit. And then this particular opportunity presented itself and it just felt like a really amazing way to sort of give back to a community that you know, when I was in it, felt like it was lacking a little bit, but now there are so many people like you lovely humans and like, yeah. honestly, the Gen Z people are killing it in Miami right now. It's, it's really impressive what you kids are doing. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've just been meeting so many, so many cool folks and I'm trying to make a space that's uh, more accessible for, you know, normal people and people who live here in Wynwood because it's really touristy and expensive and overrun right oh, now. Oh, definitely. Sure. I'm, I'm actually so excited about the space that you're opening up in Wynwood because it's kind of like reintroducing some of that original energy that was kind of like before when, you know, the artists were just like out on the streets and innovating and doing and just like creating new stuff like kinda, and, you know, it's still alive, but it's the, the vibe has definitely changed. So kind of like re-injecting some of that some of that space and something that you said that was interesting was you said that like this opportunity presented itself so I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what that means um, so my father's and his uh, his family have been doing business in the Wynwood area like before it was Wynwood since like the early 80s the mid 80s and um, I mean for for lack of a better description, I've been jokingly calling it a bribe. My dad was like, hey, do you want to live here? <laughs> and um, I was like, eh, I've, I'm looking at jobs in California, et cetera. And, but then when I realized that he was serious and not you know, just trying to be a crazy person, um, I, I actually started thinking about it. And I was like, if I actually had access to a space without a lot of the traditional costs associated with being in a space like Wynwood. Right. Um, I just thought it could be a really great way to sort of like use my privilege for good and give people who, you know, can't afford five, eight, ten thousand dollars rent for a night to have an art show or a pop up or something like that. So I'm really trying to make space for people who are priced out of Wynwood right now and bring that more like indie underground energy like back into the area. Oh my God, that is so fantastic and so needed. Mm -hmm. um, Gladia and I have definitely been there when it comes to the point of like, we're looking for a place to put on a show. We want to create this really good space. And then we're like, dang though, but like $600 for a night. And that's cheap. And, and that's, that's, yeah, and that's cheap like for kind of some men. of the places that are in Wynwood. Um, and so it's, it's really amazing what you're doing and how you're giving back. I appreciate that. Like yeah. late stage capitalism comes for us all. Yeah. And um, trying to, like I said, use my privilege for good, alleviate some of that um, barriers for some people. Like and I've been meeting so many amazing people through it. And like I'm really happy to be able to keep doing this. Who are some of like these people that you're meeting and like starting to collaborate with? Because you've met like definitely you've been naming some names to us and it's it's like incredible because it's actually a lot of people that are either already in our organization or at least like in this general network of creatives. It's a very small world down here, I'm learning. Um, for instance, I was just at the Angels Only Market last weekend, and yes. I bought this shirt by uh, the lovely Melissa of Handstitch. Helping Handstitch, yes. Helping yes. Hand Shout out to Helping Handstitch. And I didn't even know that they were already in the Pana Network until I was coming for, for this today. Um, so that's really great. I've also been talking with um, Pangea and Emily. Um, she's of like, Recreate Miami. Yes. We're talking about doing some workshops about um, upcycling materials, creative reuse, um, clothing swaps, thrifting, um, and just really being able to, skills that people have sort of slept on. Right. Um, we want to have sewing classes. We want to have education classes. Um, my partner who's really been helping me a lot with this, um, shout out to Maxine, you're the best. Uh, she really is hyped on teaching young men who don't know how to tie ties, how to tie ties and like doing Wait. maybe a resume workshop in the background or something. Like we really want That's wanna... your, your partner, Maxine. Yeah, no, she's been, she's not part of the Panic group. I'm just getting on a tangent now, excuse me. Um, no, no, you're good. No, I that's just... such a cute event idea. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> but so that's sort of like wholesome community focused like education but still fun mm -hmm. um, is kind of what we want to do uh, we've also been working with um, the figure drawing pop-up milfed mm -hmm. um, Love them. man I love figure drawing highly recommend um, let's see who else um, Casa Crea, which they threw a tea and spoken word event a couple weeks ago at our space, and they had poetry, and people brought all different kinds of tea to share, and that was just lovely. Um, and we're having another Casa Crea event on next Thursday, the 11th. That's going to be a collaborative art jam. Everybody's going to bring different supplies and, you know, make art together. That is so cute. I'm so excited for that. I definitely will try to stop by for that event. And it's going to be the the first, I think one of the first events in the space, correct? Yes, it's actually going to be the second event in the official new space. We had been operating out of an unconditioned, uh, excuse me, unair conditioned warehouse. And finally, we are past that phase of our development, which I'm really excited about. Hooray! <laughs> Yay for air conditioning. <laughs> Um, right last in time night, for summer. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that it was not sustainable like, past <laughs> a certain point. Um, but last night we actually had our first uh, event in the new space. It was a little board game meetup through um, the community Ooh. app Bloom, and just sort of organizing um, like a little like speed friending they called it, like just getting Aww. to know people. And we played charades. It was very wholesome. Um, and everybody had a really good time. Hopefully they'll be coming, you know, to future events. We ha I heard you had something on the 19th. We also have a Shabbat dinner coming up on the 19th. We've thrown some family dinners, Jewish Shabbat. Um, we're not super religious, but just trying to provide like a community alternative. There's like so many Jews in South Florida and there's also a lot of people that are like Jew adjacent. So, right. you know, like it's open to everybody. So we just have like food and music and people like people from different like arts communities and music communities and just bringing everybody together. Um, so that's going to be May 19th as well. Oh, that sounds amazing. And I also hear that you're going to be celebrating something on that same day. The May 19th event is also low-key my birthday party. Yay! <laughs> it's also our artist in residence, uh, Whitney Page's birthday as well. My birthday's earlier in the week. Her birthday is that actual day. So um, we, uh, we like to throw these community dinners to bring people together, but we thought we would take advantage of the date for this one. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Happy birthday. Highly, happy early birthday to you both. Thank you. Gotta love Taurus season. Yes. yes. <laughs> I hope it's been treating you well. So far, so good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so we, you've touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to ask you like the why of your mission, right? And why exactly, like for you personally, do you feel um, just aligned with this, with what you're doing here in South Florida? Um, a lot of the events that we've done so far are things that like I personally believe in like very deeply, um, whether it's, uh, you know, queer dinner or I've thrown an event with the Democratic Socialist America for um, Trans Day of Visibility. Cool. Um, like I'm just trying to really like support these types of communities. Um, and also maybe this is a little bit because I just moved back to Miami last year, but I've noticed that there's not really as much of a, what's the word? like an already existing like community network as there was as much in New York. And it, it felt like in, in the five boroughs, no matter what you're interested in, like how niche or how weird your interest was, there will be a group that already is having like regular meetings and you can just like find the Facebook group or the discord server and show up and it like, it's already there. It exists. Um, I've, spoken to people and you know gotten the feeling that there's a little bit less of that down here mm -hmm. and the places that are um you know communities that like pause rambling um we're just trying to i'm trying to provide like an inclusive wholesome like chill no pretentiousness like um, it, Wynwood is just so touristy and $18 cocktails and, 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 and like, I, there's an ban at Dear Eleanor. We will not have it. Um, and it's just, I, I want, I want there to be something different. Churchill's is gone. Las Rosas is gone. Rip. And yeah. millennials are heartbroken and you can come hang out with us now. <laughs> 
But I mean, I was interested in what you were rambling about yeah. because you were starting to talk about kind of like the differences that you've observed between the NYC and the Miami scenes. And it's so interesting because, you know, like we're two cities that are on the East Coast and we have so many um, New Yorkers that are kind of like flocking to Miami 60,000 in 2020 yeah yeah I mean I don't I mean I don't know if I would consider you one of them because you're here from here originally so according to the IRS I'm one of them but I have a 305 <laughs> cell phone number so I think that supersedes where my previous payroll taxes were coming true from. true true so I mean I definitely wanted to ask you about like because you were talking about how there are multitudes within multitudes kind of in New York, like, you know, you, you find like a little corner and then that little corner has like, you know, its own like community and network and, and like super specific network, um, I guess like platform there. Um, and sort of like moving to Miami, what are the, what are the main differences that you've observed kind of between the two environments? The, First and most notable example to come to mind is the sex positive community down here. In New York, there are dozens and dozens of different like adult oriented events in a variety of flavors. And you know, they, like I said, pre-existing plug and play, like you can just like find the party and go to the party and meet people and you're done. Um, there is a far less established community down here for those types of events. Um, and I have been trying to go out and like meet people who are already trying to develop these communities down here. And what I'm hearing a lot of is that it's hard to find venues. It's hard to find comfortable venues. It's hard to find safe venues. Right. Um, and the more and more I heard that, I was just like, oh, like Miami's ready. I have to do this. Yes. Like, and it's also really inaccessible, not even monetarily, but just like getting there. Right. Yeah. Um, Wynwood is sometimes a nightmare to navigate. Um, dear Eleanor, ha has something that a lot of places in Wynwood don't, and that is, for the time anyway, free parking. Um, yes. <laughs> and just being able to have a parking lot where you don't have to spend $25 to like, you know, park somewhere for the night, that in and of itself is great. Um, so it, things like that, I'm just trying to make it more accessible. I'm trying to make things more inclusive. I'm every community dinner that we've had so far there have been you know discount codes we don't want anybody to feel like they can't attend an event for lack of funds right um there are people in the community like we we've been doing um tiered ticket pricing for some things so people can you know pay a little bit more if you are you know financially comfortable in your life and then that'll sort of subsidize the people who are either attending for free or paying a little bit less um and that way the community can just sort of like support each other you know keep it all sort of within the same little network bubble that's really really like integral to what we're trying to do as well just keep money within the community because that person that spends 25 dollars on parking that's 25 dollars that they can't spend on the local artists or the exactly. local musician they can't go and buy merch um because they just spent it on putting their car in a space in a, in a space like hours. just like it's such a wild concept to me parking like can, do you we've all gotten Winwood tickets how many Winwood tickets have you gotten just one actually just one okay well I I definitely have like four toad. or five Enrique Everyone got towed so toad. sorry to hear about that um so just like me lamenting yeah. my <laughs> no it's real the struggle is real um, especially everything is so spread out in Miami, public transportation, is, we're, we're not, that's a subject for a different podcast. Um, yeah. And we'll just a, a city yeah. developer here at I'll, some point. I'll, so exciting, I love that. No, we just have to find one. Yeah, we just have to like materialize them, but go, Ask once the universe we do, for what yeah. you want. No, we've yeah. been manifesting. We manifested yeah. a venue with you, so Amazing. look at that. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, let's uh, take this opportunity to talk about that, actually. Yes, yes. So our first um, event, with a dear Eleanor is going to be on the 27th, right? Mm -hmm. 27th. Yes. Yeah, Saturday the 27th. Yes. Yes. So, and group de Pana. It's another group de Pana, which we've been doing these. Uh, we did one last month, and it was a little bit to celebrate Annette's birthday. But it was also like a test trial to see like if how people responded to an event that was more low-key, like 
a little bit of art, a little bit of yoga, a little bit of movement, connection, like in just intimate conversations. And it was really well received. So we're planning on doing it bi-weekly um, with Sarah at Dear Eleanor. I'm so excited to be able to host this. Um, one of the things that I'd really been, you know, fantasizing about, like manifesting maybe when thinking about this space is I want to do markets with a bunch of different local vendors and I want to have different creators come and talk about the stuff that they make and their passions and all of that stuff. And it really just feels like Club Debana is like exactly that. And I'm really excited to meet like you know, all of the different um, folks that we're going to have cycle through these events. Um, I feel like um, it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be really good and people can, you know, just be in a room together and see what each other's working on. And I think like when you put everybody in a space together and give people opportunities to connect and talk to each other, like that's when the good shit happens. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just hoping to foster more of that. Yeah, when you peel away all the pretenses and all of the things that that hold us back, right. I think, yeah. Worry less about your outfit, just show up. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, and our our event is like definitely that is super the intention. Like we we really want to make sure that this club becomes like a platform that we can regularly have like other people come and do their own workshops and you know like the first two weeks it's probably just going to be me leading art activities and Gladie doing yoga but after that we're definitely you know already have like a clothing swap in the plans mm -hmm. that is going to be like also an inclusive clothing swap we want to make sure that we're like bringing in vendors you know that like every time we have this club that there is like an intention behind it and that we can include more and more of our members into it so um yeah just super excited especially in tandem with this podcast that we now have like two solid avenues of like hey you're gonna join our directory you're gonna join our platform and here are two avenues that right off the bat we can offer you mm -hmm. for you to get in front of of like more locals more people consumers in miami that are that are like looking at your stuff mm -hmm. And to reach, integrate yourself into community too. I think like a lot of times it's really difficult to find like-minded people. Um, and it's, there are no, I mean, the apps that are out there are made to make money. They're not made for connection. That's not the objective of the things that you find. So I'm really excited that more people are interested in, in, in providing that for people and making it accessible because we also don't have the time to be scrolling on Instagram all our lives. We have the time, but is that how you want to spend it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'd rather also, spend it with you. Instagram does not make it easy. Let's yeah. make that clear. No. Like, <laughs> I am so bad at Instagram. I, I was told by a friend at the very, very beginning of the Dear Eleanor journey that the Instagram was giving Arizona MLM mom vibes. Oh, no. Um, you know, it was, it was constructive criticism that I needed. I respect her for it. You know, sometimes you need the friends to tell you the hard truths. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a learning process. This entire project has been a learning process for me. I've never worked in this field before. I'm sort of like patchworking skills from various other things that I've done to put together to figure out how to do this. And um, it's just, I've been learning a lot from every single person that I've met, like you both included. So like, it's just been, it really has been like a community journey, like since we started throwing events in January. That's how it's felt for us as well. I, I think <laughs> with our events and with other things, we're just like, hey, can you help us like to our members? And they're just like, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that it speaks to how much people believe in community and how much people are willing to give when, the, when they find alignment, as we've said. Yeah, and how receptive they are to, to just kind of like you know, recognizing that this is something that is good for them mm -hmm. and that like is good for the community in general. Like it's been kind of like that acknowledgement of, of like alignment, again, that word. And then just like, yes, let's bring it into fruition. And it's it's incredible because like, you know, I've I've met people that have been in the community for a long time and that quite frankly have become jaded <laughs> 
just like just and really it's just so like easy, mad yes. and and upset and they're like no you don't understand like miami like just people here are like out to make money and they don't care and they'll step over you and uh luckily that really hasn't been our experience and i think p uh, part of the reason that that is like helping that is like there is like a, a community that is now coming out that is trying to more intentionally foster those connections and it's also the way that we're moving that is like hey you know we we really are just trying to connect people and we're doing it in good faith and then kind of like inviting that in and you know that that d doesn't say that like things won't happen um it won't that's yeah, enough, I definitely but. think that those types of people are still in Miami. That's definitely the reputation that, at least when it comes to entertainment and like that type, throwing parties and that type of stuff in Miami, that vibe is still definitely out there. But I think um, the people that I have so far been working with, and I think you might agree with me when I say this, is that when you start putting the people like first rather than the profit, like the money will come because people are having a good time mm -hmm. and people will stay to hang out and like order another drink and buy merch and like do all these things. But it's because you're putting the focus on the people and their creative work. Absolutely. And everything else will just flow from there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's been our case too. And I think to some degree, we're kind of like dreaming up the world that we want to live in. And I think that there's a lot of people who are into that once they are allowed to dream as well. Once they like aren't dreaming alone, it's really difficult for you to like imagine a world that you want to inhabit when it's just you against like the forces of the universe <laughs> and the system that we're in. Um, so I think that the other thing that has been really successful is we're all in this, we're all dreaming together pretty much collectively. And whatever it is that we're all dreaming collectively, that's what's gonna come out of it, so. I love that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. well, well, yeah, yeah, we can just like wrap up this interview. Thank you so much for this lovely conversation. Thank you so much Sarah. for having me. Oh, Thank oh, you. actually, I did want to ask you one last question. Shoot. So, um, what does Dear Eleanor mean? <laughs> oh, yes. Like the most basic question, actually. <laughs> okay, so, so Dear Eleanor came from um, when I realized that I was going to be living in Florida long term and being a small business owner in Florida, I went out and bought a bunch of like history of Florida books because like I know that things are, to put it lightly, a little politically messy here. And I kind of wanted a little bit more background of exactly what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. So I went out and bought this book called Finding Florida. I don't remember the name of the author, but it's like this long and it has a yellow and green cover. It's excellent, highly recommend. And very, very early on in that book was a story about a widow who moved down to Miami um, in the 30s with her son. And Miami was a very, very young city. There was not a lot of, you know, like, resources I mean the people lived here but there wasn't like shopping malls or Macy's or anything like that and people in Miami have always been really really bad at handling winter um, so winter rolled Definitely. around and this woman was freezing and wrote a letter to the White House asking for a coat and number one I just think that that's hilarious like she probably moved down from the Northeast like what you ditched every single coat that you own like, <laughs> But, you know, that's fine. The Goodwills down here Lots are, like, popping for ski clothes. Like, um, things haven't really changed that much. Right. But anyway, so she wrote a letter to the White House asking for a jacket. Um, she asked the First Lady. The First Lady at the time was Eleanor Roosevelt. So, um, dear Eleanor Roosevelt, just sort of got stuck in my head after mm -hmm. that. And I was sort of chewing on that idea. And the more I thought about it, I was like, no, this is exactly the type of community support that gets me excited about doing a venue in Miami. People asking for help when they need it. People setting a boundary and saying like, no, I can't actually do that for you. She did not get sent the coat. Eleanor Roosevelt did not mail it to her, unfortunately. <laughs> but she asked and, you know, just doing what you can and asking people around you like when you need a little bit of extra support just like really spoke to me. So dear Eleanor, um, let's help keep each other warm. Oh, I love that. that's incredible. And sometimes it really is just asking. Mm -hmm. It really is just asking. Um, so, yes, now, <laughs> thank you for that lovely conversation, thank Sarah. Uh, please make sure to check out Dear Eleanor on Instagram. It's at Dear... Dear Eleanor, E-L-E-A-N-O-R. 
Dear Eleanor 305 on Instagram. Awesome. And uh, the South Florida location where oh, you yeah. are, at, which yeah. is in We're in Winwood. Winwood. We're on 28th Street. And right now we're open by event only. But um, in the next few months, we will be gearing up to regular weekly opening hours. And people can just come swing by, hang out, make some art, listen to music. Oh, my God. Absolutely. That's amazing. Love just that. Just loitering around in Winwood. Love that. Can you believe that? I can barely believe it. Love Welcome that. to the dream. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you so much, thank Sarah. You. We're actually going to be inviting now um, Enrique. Yes. So we're from Still Blue. Yes, yes. <laughs> from Still Blue. So we're super excited to introduce a new addition to our Pana community, Enrique of Still Blue. Still Blue is a five-piece band emulsifying indie rock, folk, and alt country with lyrics meditating on love, loss, and getting older in the perspiring humidity of Miami, Florida, which wow, we can that's definitely that's very <laughs> specific. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Enrique. Thank Hello. you so Hello. much for coming on. No, thank you all so much for having me. Sorry, let me put this down. Thank you so much, and, and, and really amazing hearing Sarah and everything that she's doing. So really cool to be here today. That's awesome. I wanted to ask real quick if we can play like a little bit of the your new EP, yeah. Paint Me Funny. Can we? So we need to reformat the USB. So oh, no. Box. Oh, okay. So no. Okay. Totally okay. You okay. can check it out on streaming, out everywhere. Paint Absolutely. Me funny. Um, Paint me funny. Well, you guys are missing out because I love your promo for this for this you. music video. Yeah. First of all, thank you. How did you come up with this? A band of clowns. Yeah, that's a great question. So we've been we've been doing this. Oh, sorry. We've been doing this now for a while. Um, you know, the band we we got together. Well, I started looking for people in 2019, but we didn't get. You know, we went through a couple iterations of of the band as things go, you know, up until 2022 was our first full year of actually playing shows together once we brought in our bass player and our drummer that were like, you know, the, the last missing pieces of the puzzle. Um, and, you know, we started recording and then one of the first songs that we really like conglomerated, you know, to or just like, you know, melded with was Paint Me Funny. It was a song that I wrote in 2018. So, um, you know, we released an EP that we started recording through the pandemic really remotely because of the pandemic when it was just me, Sophia, and uh, and Danny. So we were sending stems back and forth and we recorded this EP, but now we're getting ready to release some of our songs that are a little bit more, you know, um, a little bit more full band, like reflective of what we sound like now and what we sound like in, in person. And that first song was Paint Me Funny. And basically this song is about, um, the reason that we chose the clown, the clown motif um, is because, uh, so this, this I, just, I just did a Still Blue story time, the first one yesterday, talking a little bit about this, but long story short is... Definitely check that out, by the way. Yeah, it was, it was the first super one. Cool. I tell a lot of stories on stage, so we were like, we gotta cut this down. Let's Storyteller this first, musician next. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, basically, I was working at a camp program at FIU in like 2018 when I was about to graduate, and I met this one student who painted religious figures as clowns. So that like stuck in my head. I thought that was super interesting. I was like thinking about that a lot. And then when I sat down to write something, um, that phrase came into my head, paint me funny. And the song like went on a couple of different meaning iterations as, as songs do, you know, they, they change, you know, meaning for myself a lot of the times as, as things go. But it started off, uh, you know, like I think that the meaning started off about, you know, the way that people that you love or the way that, you know, family sometimes or yourself can, can make you feel, you know, dumb for pursuing things creatively and artistically. But over time, it's, it's like, it's really changed the meaning with Still Blue and now it's, it feels like it's about, um, um, you know, when people that you love, uh, all of a sudden this like really sacred, beautiful relationship might, you know, turn into something that this person's making you look silly or feel silly. Um, so we decided to go with the clown motif to like really lean into the whole paint me funny thing. So we dressed up as clowns, we went all over the city, we shot a bunch of stuff, and, and now we are, we are clown noir for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially because you're having everything black and white, too. Yeah, yeah, that was a change as well. Yeah, the, our friend at the New Times wrote about that um, before the release. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, it's, it's temporary, you know, because like we're, we're about to release four songs back to back to back that we got to record last year at Animal Music Studios. Nice. So um, we really wanted to like mark a change, you know, starting off with Paint Me Funny. So we were like, let's go black and white. Let's like really mark this. But, um, you know, we're going to be introducing a little bit more color. We, we've got some ideas as to like how we're going to market the next three songs. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I, I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about like kind of 
more like introductory stuff just because like um your your group is still like a little bit new to me so yeah. i i've been seeing your name around you guys have been playing so many shows and it has been really interesting because you're around like a lot of names that i like as well and uh Kind of the first time that I that we were in the same space that I was like that is still blue, is uh, actually during Las Rosas last live show. Oh man, that's crazy! Yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. what was happening was that it was uh, the first e. It was like the the album release of Folktale San Pedro. Shout out yeah. to them. I love them so much. Yeah, they're incredible. Uh, they asked me to vend uh, as my artwear brand, Alo Baby. Okay. And I was like uh, sitting there vending. So I was actually outside for most of the event. Mm. So I wasn't able to like listen to you guys play. But something that did like stay with me was when I looked at your merch table and um, you know, like artist to artist, right? Solid graphics, Thank you. super like great um, composition. You guys use, I think they were cyanotypes. They looked like cyanotypes. Yeah, the, the cover of Flora is a cyanotype. And we, we, we've done that a lot. We really like messing with the, the printmaking. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Like 100% caught my eye and I was just like, ugh. there's nothing that I like better more than like a musical like group, right? Or like artist that is able to kind of convey their music in also like a visual medium. But that's, you know, that's just me. And then I also listened to your music and it was great. I loved oh, it too. You, you. <laughs> no, I'm just I mean, like a geek about. When it comes to that, I'll, I'll say first and foremost, I mean, there's so much to say about that, that that Sarah brought up as well. That, and, and first of all, just wanted to say, you know, the work that you're doing with dear Eleanor, hearing about that is exactly what we talk about at So Blue and that we've talked about you know, of where, what we want to do and where we want to go with the communities and what you all are doing. It's just really cool to be in a space with people that are thinking the same way and are passionate about these things, right? It's like um, you know, making sure that we're cultivating this creative space in Miami. It's really important. Um, and it goes back to what you were talking about. Um, but first and foremost, I'll say the graphics. Um, thank you for that. And like my, my teammate, I mean my, not my teammate, my bandmate, right? Well, teammate too, but uh, we're super DIY. We do everything ourselves, right? So we record everything ourselves. We mix, we master, you know, sometimes we get our friends to do it now with like these, these releases, but everything we do is really in-house. And um, Sophia, which is our, my guitar player and singer, you know, one of my bandmates, uh, she's like my musical soulmate. And she's really like the driving force behind all of that. She has, you know, designed all of our shirts, designed all of our merch. She designs our flyers. She's really incredible. She just had, uh, she was, uh, she's about to graduate from FIU and she had her like uh, exhibition and she showcased a, a lot of the, like, we just put up a bunch of flyers promoting Paint Me Funny all over the city. She did all of that. She did the shirt that Eddie's wearing. So it's really her and she's, she's really incredible. And you know, we, we go back and forth and um, on like what we should do, what we shouldn't do, but she's the driving force of like all of the graphics and the shirts and the merch that we make. That's so. incredible. Congratulations yeah. to her for graduating, no, by the no, way. Yeah. She's the best. But I will say real quick about that night. Um, and it, it goes back to what we were talking about with Sarah and dear, dear Eleanor and all of these uh, places that close. Even the, the first night that I met Eddie at uh, Underground Coffee House in Fort Lauderdale, we spoke about this. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And, and that, that day was unknowingly we played the last show ever at Las, Ro uh, Las Rosas, you know? We had no idea it was going to be that way. Yeah. We, we also, like, we ran into some trouble that day just because there was so much chaos. But, you know, we, we, we got there to the venue to to unload and to sound check. And then all of a sudden, we just start, you know, we're, we're on the stage sound checking. We're the first ones sound checking. And then people all of a sudden just start coming in crying. And we're like, what is going on? What's happening? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we hear that this is the last night of Las Rosas. It's gone forever. It was a, a goal of ours to even play on that stage. And we're, I'm so happy that we were able to do that. But it was so sad, you know, to see these, these you know, these titans in, like, the local you know, music scene closing. Churchill's, we never got to play. I've been to a billion shows in Churchill's, but, you know, once the pandemic came around, you know, and right. we were still establishing ourselves, Space Space Mountain was another one, another really cool DIY space that closed because of the pandemic. And, it, and it's really horrible, you know, so places like Dear Eleanor opening, uh, we were trying to open up a venue space in Coconut Grove um, that was halted a little bit that we're like waiting on some permits for with uh, Anthony Witherspoon who owns this like really cool plot of land on Grand Avenue. But it's a problem, and it's sad, and uh, we need to support each other and support space, spaces like Dear Eleanor, you know, that are really trying to do the hard work of keeping the community alive and giving spaces for people to be creative. Yeah. 
And uh, that's super interesting that you were talking about that space in Coconut Grove. I'd love to talk to you about that like some other time. But what I, I, I definitely wanted to ask you about um, kind of like the start of Still Blue. Cause yeah, tell me if I talk too much. I'm sorry. I talk way too much. So no. uh, I'm, that's <laughs> what you're here to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about how you started and your particular why or why for you and maybe yeah. if you have an idea of why for your band members as well. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I first and foremost, I think I would like to say that I'm a first generation immigrant, you know, so I was born in Peru, came here when I was two years old and I've lived in Miami my entire life. Right. Um, for a long time, it was really difficult for my parents. I love my parents with all my heart. We're so close. They are like my best friends. I love them with all my heart, but you know, it was always really difficult for them to understand the music thing ever since I was a kid. You know, I wanted to play the guitar since I, as long as I could, I could remember. There's like videos of me pretending to play when I was like a toddler, you know, so. Started playing when I was 12 and, and um, as I got older, you know, when I was in high school, I started playing shows alone, like around the city. I had a band in high school, but nothing serious. It was, it was hard because my parents didn't really want me to like take it seriously. You know, they were like, you know, focus on the studies. It's the first gen thing, you know, they, they just want to make, it's not because they were, they didn't, you know, they weren't trying to support me. It's because they just wanted to make sure that I was safe and, you know, financially stable in the future. Um, and so I would get into fights with them a ton, you know, and especially when I was getting, when I was in college. And um, I was trying to take it a little bit more seriously. Uh, it produced like a little solo EP that's really bad. So I'm not even, even going to mention that. But, um, you know, so we would fight all the time. But, you know, they would always say, you know, once you graduate college and you have a job, what are we going to tell you? We can't tell you anything. So I feel like I, I wasn't like I was always writing music and I was always going for this. But it, I didn't really try to take it seriously until 2019 when I graduated um, college. And then I was like, all right, like there's like like. There's nothing else you can say now. Like, you got to go out there and, and do this. So I, I had just come back from an internship in Chicago. And I was like, all right, like, like no more procrastinating. Put up flyers all over the city in FIU, you know, UM, in, like, you know, strategic locations, Wynwood. And I met um, Danny first, our lap steel player, uh, keys player. He's, like, a virtuoso. He didn't start off playing the lap steel, <laughs> you know. Um, that was something that we asked him to try, and he, he's like an, an incredible musician, so he picked it up, and it's a really big part of the band. But I met Danny first uh, because he saw a flyer that I put up in, in FIU in the School of Music. and uh, Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Your band formed because you were just like, hey, who wants to play with me? Yeah, I mean, I was like, it was very like, grassroots. It was, it was very like, <laughs> it was very like, you know, and it felt impossible. And that's one of the things that it makes me kind of emotional sometimes, you know, because like I think about we just went on our first tour. I'm, I'm doing I'm going on a little Congrats. bit. of a tangent. Thank you. We went on our Congrats. first tour and I had gotten off the stage and there was like a few kids that came up to me and they were like, hey, it's so cool seeing another brown person in like the indie scene, you know, and like on stage. And I talked to them for a while and I just remember, you know being younger and feeling like it was impossible to start a band and not seeing brown people like me either in the indie rock scene or in the indie folk scene. But back to this, found Danny, then I found Sophia at Space Mountain um, at a show on, in, in, on Halloween. She was uh, drunk and dressed as Phoebe Bridgers and we bonded. <laughs> yeah, we bonded and then, uh, so I brought her in after like the first iteration of Still Blue fell apart because people weren't serious. It's hard to find people that are really ser trying to be serious about this. Right. And so then for a while, it was just me, Sophia, and Danny. We were um, auditioning people to come into Still Blue for bass and for drums, the, literally the week that the pandemic started. So we, we had met Yamil, our bass player. I had met him a while ago when I was playing solo shows. He was a good friend. And he auditioned. But then the pandemic happened, literally the week that we were doing um, interviews. And then so then we went into pandemic mode and we... You know, we were like, oh, this will be over in like a month. And then it wasn't. So then we were, you know, Sophia, Danny and I were sending stems back and forth. And that's where Flora started, our EP Flora. And then when we finally, when things started getting better, you know, we did another round of auditions and we met. Uh, well, Yamil came back in and we, we were, you know, more than happy to bring him in. It was a no brainer. We knew we wanted him. And then, um, you know, we had another drummer who was great and he's really, really nice. And we're, he was actually he just messaged me about Pay Me Funny. Um, but it just didn't work out. You know, he was, he was a little bit younger, so he was, like, doing high school stuff, and I was like, dude, you got to go do high school stuff. Like, enjoy this time. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Definitely. So then um, we brought in Diego, who was in a band with Sophia previously, 
and he's he is mainly a guitar player, but his first instrument was drums. So we met we met up with him. We, we he auditioned, and he was the the last missing piece of the band. And and you know one of the biggest things for me when I was looking for band members is that I was looking for people that were serious, but people that I could be friends with that could like cultivate a, like a really beautiful relationship with. And I'm really lucky, you know, little by little that I found that. And they're my best friends, some of the only people I talk to. So I'm like really, really happy. It took forever and it felt impossible. But if you are a, a person trying to do it, it feels impossible and it will happen little by little. And I really encourage you to do it. Oh, that's incredible. That's and so I'm so sorry that we weren't able to play your song, but I'm no, also no, no, happy no because it gave us more time to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, talk a lot. So. stories. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. Do no, not go no anywhere, problem. though. We're done with the music segment, but we're here for our last segment called Keke, which <laughs> is a segment where we're all going to come in. So, Sarah, come back. This is so cool. Yeah, yes. we're going to ask questions. So from our viewers. From our viewers. So we asked on our stories uh, for questions, and y'all yeah, answered. Mine. And so here we are. Yes, we'll, we'll each answer one. So the first one is going to be for you, Sarah. So um, I'm going to ask you, what is, actually this is a question from B Soul, uh, and she's asking, what's most important to you, money, power, love, or security? That is a heavy question that I was not <laughs> expecting to get. Money, love, power, or security? I mean, I guess the, the answer that feels good to say is love. Um, and that has to do with all other three. I have a degree in sexuality. I can tie this up into one <laughs> knot. Like, they're all the same thing. What are you talking about? Um, vibes, community, that's what's important to me. And maybe love is the closest out of, out of those four to that. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you for that answer. Uh, and then next we have from at Spunky News. This one is for you, Enrique. What does Still Blue mean to you? Oh, great question, Spunky News. Um, winner of our most recent shirt giveaway. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I will say, you know, still people ask me that question. And none of us can remember how we came up with this name, funny enough. We're like, where did this come from? And I'm like, Sophia, you said it. She's like, no, you said it. And I don't remember how we came to this. But um, what, what I always think about, um, I think I'll take it two directions. Number one, I think of like a still blueness, you know, like um, that's the way I interpret the name literally in my head. Like when you look out your window and it, like the sky is very still and very blue, like that pale blue stillness is kind of like what I, what I, what I envision. But also, you know, like I was mentioning, um, to me, still blue um, is something, it's not a two year endeavor. It is a lifelong endeavor that I'm so happy and honored to have finally gotten to. It's, it's a group of people um, that I care deeply about and it's a group of people that are trying their hardest to just make the most honest, um, you know, music possible. Um, so that's what I would say that means to me. Awesome. Oh, I wanted to add because we didn't do this. Um, so you can find Still Blue on Instagram yes. at Still Blue. And where else? Well, so yeah, so you can look us up on Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter, all of that stuff under Still Blue Band at Still Blue Band. Um, and, you know, Bandcamp, all of that good stuff. You can look us up on any streaming platform. Uh, Still Blue. We just we got Flora EP out. We just came out with Paint Me Funny last week, and we've got three more songs back to back coming, you know, very very soon, and then a lot more. We could record a whole album, you know, but we're, we're working on it slowly. So check us out. Check us out on TikTok too. We're we're trying to do that really hard. We're trying to get better at that. It's hard. It's very difficult. It's really tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we asking ourselves questions? Well, you you asked me. A question. Okay, I'm asking you a question. What has been your favorite part of Panamia so far? Hmm. Okay. So my favorite part of Panamia so far, I think honestly has been, this is cheesy, whatever. Um, it's been the collaboration. Yeah. Having Enrique and Sarah on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, but I mean the, as a whole kind of like since, since we started this project in August, it's kind of been like such a whirlwind. And there has been like so many um, like great things happening since then. And then I, I feel like our dynamic has, has kind of like allowed for just so many crazy awesome things to happen. And it really has not been easy, but it also has been so crazy fun. Amazing. And so like just a lot of crazy things that just like happen out of nowhere and then just feel like, boom, like, you know, I thought about it and then now it's in front of me and now we can like, 
work with all of these awesome people in the community to create something like that I don't know you know you just you just kind of like only dream about except it it's happening in life in a way yeah like, <laughs> feels so, like pinch me and I like <laughs> like is this real but yeah definitely okay so I'll do you now okay. I'll do you now um what is it uh okay so what is the biggest hurdles when making Panamia and or Panavision so you can choose Mm, I know that we said that, you know, we've been meeting a lot of people who are aligned and, and great, but I want to mention, I think the hardest part for us has been really when we do meet these people who are just so entrenched in individualism. Um, and it's, it's not really difficult at, because like, it's not our job to like change that mindset. It's just difficult to watch because it can be so much easier. Like it can be so much easier and it can feel so much better when it's in community, when it's in a group, when you don't have to like pull yourself up by the bootstraps, when you, when it's on a handout, it's it's like people wanting to help, people wanting to be there for you, um, and so um, I guess that's like the hardest part for me personally to like see and to be around. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I, I hope that we can kind of contribute to like this mind shift towards community, where it's like, hey, we can all work together and then all succeed together. Like it's not, you know, you know, I, my ex success comes at the expense of yours, kind yeah. of like deprogramming that. It's not can, like that we can get ahead together. It's like, that's the only way. Uh -huh. That's the only way for us to be out, be able yeah. to like change the world that we live in. Um, yeah. So it's just, yeah. 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 Can I add a quick thing to that? Super quick. Yeah, yeah. super it's, quick. It's like it was something that so much of your conversation, I was like, oh, my God, I want to jump in there. Um, so much of what you said, but it's, it's like what you were saying. It's like, you know, what, what you all are bringing back to. It's like, why isn't there like more community here in Miami? And I feel like, you know, it's so hard because we're also, you know, geographically separated by such big distances. But I think there is a big community in Miami, a big like feeling in Miami in these creative spaces of like, oh, I got to, you know, make it myself. And if I make it, you know, I'll help out who I can, but I'm not really trying to like look out for the people that are coming up. And, and I think things like this, this is why it's so important to do this, you know, to like bring everybody up together and to cultivate that feeling of, of community and helping everybody. Is Absolutely. What we really need. Yeah, yeah, it's about thinking about the generation that's coming next too. Yeah. It's about making it easier for them. Thank you so much for that, you guys. Thank you, panel. This has been Kike. To submit your questions for an upcoming episode, DM us on Instagram or Twitter at Panamia Club. Yes, dale mi gente linda. Well, with this, we conclude our first ever episode of Panavision. Join us next week um, to learn more about creatives and entrepreneurs working to change their communities. And next week, we're going to have Earth Bayez come on and talk about astrology and activism. Yes. And then we'll see who our musical guests will be. Um, and if you enjoyed this podcast, if you want to start engaging with our fellow panas, please leave us a review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>